Hello everyone. So I mentioned recently that I have really had a lot of fun messing around with what I'm calling the factor field and that it is related to why I think that numbers are really loops in disguise. So I wanted to quickly show how easy it is to create one of these factor fields. Now I've shown it before, but in the past I've always used visual basic scripting, which requires you to have um, Excel for it to show up in that format. And I realized um, now that I've been practicing a bit with Python, I actually know enough about Python that I can show this in Python itself. And that way more people will be able to um, experience the joy of creating this themselves. So all we have to do is import a couple of libraries here. Um, it's very straightforward. So we'll start off import numpy and we'll call this uh, as np, which is the standard. And then um, we want to get from uh, pillow, we'll import image. So this way, uh, of course, it does that import image. Um, this will allow us to actually export this as a image when we're done with it. So uh, next up, we just need to get some constraints on here. So I'm going to add a graph width. I'm going to call it G width here. And let's just make the width 100 to start with. And then we want the height and we'll make it 100 as well. And these values you can play with once you have this working and make the size however you want it to, to be. It does have to fit within a image that your computer can open. So you don't want to go ridiculous like a million by a million or anything like that. Um, next up, we're going to need an array. Um, this is why we use NumPy, so we can create it. And we want to make it a size, and the size is going to be the height by the width. And um, that's the format we'll do in height first, then width. And we want to call this, we'll just call it uh, the array of data. And that will be NP. And we'll start off with um, filling it with just ones. And it's going to be of the size, array size. And this is going to have a data type of int. So this right now would just fill an array uh, 100 by 100 with the number 1. And we're going to be transporting that into an image later. And that will make, because it's the number 1, the image will have white pixels wherever this is. So what we want to do now is override some of these with the correct pattern by changing their value to zero, which will create a black pixel in that area. And this is where we need to have two loops to run what we're doing. So first we need our columns. So I'll just call it CUL for column. And it's going to be in the range starting with the zero to the width. Then the first thing, and um, because I indented there, let me uh, make sure I get this right. Ah. And of course, trying to fix things, I do <laughs> this works. I keep forgetting that Python is indentation oriented. So I'm used to different white spaces, but that's fine. Immediately after we get our first for loop, we need to add in a second loop, which is going to be our row. And so the row is going to have a specific range that we're using here. So first, the range is going to be based on the column we're on. It will go up to the height. And then the step that we're using is the column plus one. Now, the reason why we have the plus one is because indices are zero indexed. So they'll start with the number zero. This last uh, attribute here is telling how many times you're skipping on the next row over or the next column over. And you cannot skip zero. So you have to have it increased by one. Once we've got that done, all we need to do is define our target cell which is going to be the row and the column. And then once we have that, we update our array where the target cell value now becomes set to zero. And this is it. This is the entire thing that will update the array. Now all we need to do is export it. So to, re, uh, to, to export it, we want to first rescale the image. Um, and we're going to do it but like this and... Um, Let's just put this in. I had to look this one up earlier to make sure I type this correctly. Um, all this is doing is making sure that the values are exported as they need to in order to produce the uh, image correctly. And we only need an 8-bit image. Um, next up, we'll just create our image. 
call im is going to be image. It is from the array that is our rescale image. And finally, we just need to save this. And uh, helps if I can type correctly. And I'm just going to call this um, factor field png. And that is it. This is the entire thing. So let's save this and then we run it. And if I typed everything correctly, this will finish. And I didn't type everything correctly. Um, oh, yes. Uh, I actually have to define this. So let me break out of here. It's the target cell equals row and column. So there we go. Now we'll run that again. And oh, unit, and it's supposed to be uint. See, this is the, the fun part. I type it correctly when I don't need to worry about this. But again, uint, because it's an integer. And now, barring any other typos, we'll see. So this completed. And now we go up and we go to open the file, which defaults over here. And we've got this PNG file here which we double click on and there you go. This has created the first 100 columns and the first 100 rows of the factor field. So that's how easy it is to program this, right, like that. And if we wanna create another one, um, width, um, width gets boring really quickly, so I won't go more than about 250. Um, let's do a thousand rows though. Save this and then we do our start, run that again. It just takes a second to compile, then we're done. And um, yes, we want to reload that. And we just go back to here. And you can see it's already updated to make it longer. So you can create whatever size image you want and whatever size image will fit on your computer. This will show you the factor field pattern. Let me go back, actually, um, let me get this to a smaller version again. Uh, 250 is fine for the width, again, because width doesn't really matter. But let me change this back to 150 for a second. Save it and then run it. And just to, to show exactly what we're doing on this, when we pull it up, this first row is actually all black lines. So it's kind of difficult to see on there uh, since I've got the dark, dark mode going on here. But this represents your ones column. And so it's every single one going down. This is the twos column, it's every other one, then every third one, every fourth one. So this is how the loop is going, uh, is being generated. This is every single row you go to the right, it generates another uh, level down. And meanwhile, if you actually count which row you're on, that represents the value of the number you're on. So number one up here, this is the first row, and it's only got one as a factor. Two is below, and it's got the first row and the, or sorry, the first column and the second column. So the number two, being row two, is represented with factors of one and two, which we know is true. Three is one and three. Row four is one, two, and four. Row five, one and five. And then of course, row six, one, two, three, and six. So since I don't have any, um, anything on this picture itself showing the, the graph scales, if you wanted to do that, you're going to have to kind of count it manually. It's one of the reasons I did use uh, Excel before, because then you have at least the row lines. But this is a graphical representation of what every single number looks like in terms of um, in terms of just the loops that create it all. And the this stuff here, like this is the kind of stuff that I love finding is we've got this um, feature here. If you notice, for these rows over here, this actually has the exact same structure from this little square that goes out for this black line there. This structure here is exactly the same as what starts here. So again, ignore this black line or just assume this top row, which is off the screen. Um, if that's just a, a completely solid black line across the top though, then this here is replicated right up here. So we start with one and then two and then one, three, one, two, four, et cetera. And so that would be the same as starting here with one and then one, two, one, uh, three, one, two, four. And of course there's other stuff once you're past this limit. But this is what I mean by having a reflection point in there 
because above it is just the same exact structure that's below it, except it's above it in the reverse of what's down below. So for this section, however far out this bar goes, then it's a reflection of what is at the top up here. And if you reverse this whole thing, it would be essentially what you get is going negative numbers going up the graph this direction. And um, it's only limited by how far out this bar goes. And again, since we were talking about um, how these are factors, what this means is this number here is going to be um, a number that you can find by one times two times three times four times five, and probably times six on this. I, it's kind of hard to tell on my screen exactly how far out it goes, but this is a number that has each of those as factors. It's not necessarily that number factorial, like six factorial or any of that, but it has to have those factors in it at some point. Anyway, that's just one of the things I like about this. I hope that this was edifying to everybody and that you all have a wonderful day.